All right, so this is going to be the continuation of the classification of the state of the discrete time function, okay? So um, let's take a look at another definition known as recurrent state. So a state I of a Markov chain is said to be recurrent if and only if starting from state I eventually return to the state is certain. In other words, a state is said to be recurrent if any time that a Markov chain leaves that state, it will return to that state in the future with probability of one, okay? So for instance, in figure one, it can be observed that any time that the Markov chain enters class four, it will always stay in that class, okay? So this follows that the states in class four are recurrent. Let's take a look at figure one. So this is the state transition diagram of communicating classes. We have already seen this from our previous tutorial. Okay, we have four classes. This is one class. This is the second class. We have a third class and this is the fourth class, okay? So if the Markov chain is to um, enter this class through state um, eight, you realize that the Markov chain will remain in this class forever. Or if, it, if the Markov chain is to enter this class through state six, it will remain in this class forever. There's no way you can escape, okay? So let's assume that the transition is starting from state eight. So it will move to state six, then from state six, there'll be a transition to state seven, then it will eventually return to state eight or from state eight, it will move to state six, then it will move to state seven, then from state seven, it will move back to state six and then return to state seven before getting back to state eight, okay? Now, if the transition is to start from state six, it will move to state seven, and it will eventually return to state um, six, or it can move to state seven, and then move to state eight, and then from state eight, it will eventually return to state what, six again. Or if the transition is to start from state seven, it will move to state six, and then it will return to state seven again. Or if you have to start from state seven, it can move to state eight, and then from state eight, there'll be a transition to state six, and then it will eventually return to state seven, okay? So this follows that if a state is recurrent, all states in its class must be recurrent, all right? Okay, so um, we have types of recurrent states. We have positive recurrent, and we have now recurrent, okay? So what is positive recurrent? A recurrent state is said to be positive recurrent if return to the state is certain and the expected return time is finite, okay? On the other hand, a recurrent state is said to be now recurrent if return to the state is certain, but the expected return time is infinite, okay? So we get to consider this transition diagram. If the transition is to start from state eight, there will be a transition to state six. Then from state six, it will move to state seven. So instead of moving back to um, state eight, it can go back to state six. So there will be some two and four transition between state six and seven. If the two and four transition between these two states becomes, it takes a very long time or becomes very large, then it shows that the expected return time to state eight is going to be um, infinite, okay? So that will give us the now recurrent. On the other hand, if let's say the transition is to start from state eight, so it will move to state six, then from state six, it will move to state seven, okay? And maybe it will go back to state six. So if the two and four transition between these two states become very short or it doesn't take too long, then it means that the expected return time to um, state eight is going to be what finite and that will give us a positive recurrent, all right? Okay, so now to mean return time. So how do we find the mean return time? Okay, now if you will check the definition for positive recurrent and null recurrent, there was a keyword that was common in both definitions called the expected return time, which is the same as the mean return time, okay? So if you check the definition, we realize that a, a recurrent state is said to be positive recurrent if return to the state is certain and the expected return time is finite, okay? On the other hand, a recurrent state is said to be now recurrent if return to the state is certain, but the expected return time is infinite. So if I realize that what to distinguish between these two definitions is the expected return time being finite for positive recurrent, and the expected return time being 
infinite for the now recurrent. Okay, so we want to find out how to calculate this expected return time. Okay, so that's basically what we want to do. So let's consider infinite irreducible Markov chain with this space, which is finite. Now let R index I denote the mean return time to state I as defined in equation one, where M index K I is expected time into the chain hit state I, given that the process is starting from state K as the initial time, which can also be expressed as defined in equation two. And we already know this from um, our previous tutorial on the mean time to absorption, okay? We, we have this here, similar expression, okay? So once you have these two equations or two formulas, you can actually find or calculate the mean return time. Okay, so let's take a look at how we can do this. An example, consider the map of change shown in figure two. We want to find the mean return time to state one. Okay, so this is the figure that we want to deal with. So if the transition is to start from state one, what is going to be the expected time that it will get back to? Um, state one, okay? So that's basically what we're going to do. So let's take a look at the solution. Let our index one denote the mean return time to state one. Also starting from state K, we wish to find the expected number of times until the chain hits state one for the first time, okay? Which can be expressed as shown below. We are using the expression from equation two, okay? So we know that um, the this will go, is going to give us zero, okay? So if we take a look at this expression, if one, if k is equal to i, we can take this, it will take the value of zero. And if k is not equal to i, then we are going to use this expression. So we can see that, yeah, we have one being equal to one. So definitely we have this to be equal to zero. So this basically means that we are looking out for the expected number of times that the chain hits state one, starting from state one, okay? So how do we find the um, expected number of times that the chain hit um, state one starting from state two. So that's basically what you have here. And you can deduce this from the transition um, diagram, okay? So let's take a look at the transition diagram. So we want to find the expected number of times that the chain hit state one starting from state two. So we can look at the different possibilities. We can look at the probability transition from state two to state one and the expected number of times that the chain will hit state one starting from state one, okay? We can also look at the probability transition from state two to itself, and the expected number of times that the chain will hit state one starting from state two. And we can also look at the probability transition from state two to state three, and the expected number of times that the chain will hit state one starting from state three. So that is basically what we have here, okay? So once you input the values, you know that this is zero, so everything will go to zero. The probability of transition from state two to itself is one out of three, okay? So we can see that from here. Probability of transition from state two to itself is one out of three, right? So we have one out of three, then we maintain this expression. And we know the probability of transition from state two to state three is also two out of three, okay? So we have it here, two out of three, okay? So um, that's basically what you have here. So once you group like this, you have this result, okay? Then we can also look out for this. That is the expected number of times that a chain will hit state one starting from state three, which can also be expressed in this form. So we can look at the different possibilities. We can look at the probability of transition from state um, three to one, and the expected number of times that a chain will hit state one starting from state one. And we can also look at the probability of transition from state three to state two, and the expected number of times that a chain will hit state one starting from state two. And we can also look at the probability of transition from state three to itself, and the expected number of times that a chain will hit state one starting from state three. So that's basically um, what we also have here. So once you input the values to obtain this, we know that this is zero, so everything will be zero. And we know this probability to be one out of two, so we maintain that. We know that this probability does not exist, so we have this to be what zero. So we just have this. Now I want to substitute equation two into one, okay? So in place of this, we want to replace it with this, okay? So that's what we have here. Once you expand, you obtain this result. And once you group like this, you have this. So once you make this the subject, 
you obtain this result. So you can also find that of this value, which also give us that, okay? So therefore, um, the mean return time to state one, okay, can be obtained using this expression from equation one. So we know that this is zero, so everything will be zero. And we know that um, this probability is half, we already know this to be five, so we have it there. And this probability does not exist. We don't have the probability transition from state one to state three. We don't have that direct transition, so that um, value to be zero, so everything will be zero. So we just have this. Once you multiply it out, you obtain this result, which means that the expected return time to state one is going to be three and a half steps, okay? All right, so this will be a trial question. I'll leave the solution in the description of this video so you can check it out. Please, if you find value in today's tutorial video, don't forget to subscribe if you have not. And thank you for watching.